let's do four axis rotary uh, let's window pick our model here all right so let's load a, a normal rotary uh, we'll put a ball mill in here okay all right so we have a, a, a rotary tool path you get rotary with four axis uh, standard okay uh, you can use this to create toolpath on 3D models. Um, with the rotary, there's a, a couple of patterns, okay? So when you look under here, you have a round and you have a long, okay? So if we go along, we can say compute. It'll take a moment to calculate and the tool's gonna run uh, back and forth down the length of the part and then it rotates. Now, the thing to know about, so, okay, it's doing um, single direction right now. So basically it's wrapping back to the start every time. Uh, to kind of make this a little easier, we're gonna say bi-directional cutting. And then also come in here and adjust this step angle. Uh, let's make it five and we'll recompute. This will make it a little easier to see. Okay, so this is a, a rotary tool path. This is four axis standard where it's cutting around. We selected the whole model and essentially the tool is gonna point to center line. Okay, uh, it's gonna point to center line the whole time. And it's gonna follow the model uh, in Z going up and down and then it rotates for each pass. Okay, so you'll notice how the tool is facing the center line of the part the whole time. Now, all right, so you selected the whole model and it's cutting everything. We understand what you would select. You would select the model. Um, how do you control where it's cutting uh, along the part, okay? There's a, a couple of ways you could do this. One way you could do it is by using operation stock. And we've talked about operation stock in other videos. Uh, I only wanna do the rotary stuff inside that body. I can select that body, okay. Uh, I think you gotta turn it on, right? So even though I selected it, I, I have to turn the option on. So let's see, trim to stock. So we can turn that on, recompute. My expectation is the toolpath is only gonna be generated where that body is, okay? So that's one way that you can control that. Uh, it takes a step of drawing the, the body, you know, so maybe maybe we don't want to do it that way. Uh, the other way to limit it is with these uh, start and stops here. So start and stop. Uh, so where it starts cutting and uh, it's just important that this references your, your machine setup location. So if we look at our machine setup location, it's here on the part. So if we wanted to control a certain area we would want to cut in, uh, what we could do is, well, we could create a silhouette of the part. Uh, so we're going to go to silhouette. We can window pick this. Um, yep. All right. And then that will give us the outermost boundary of the part. And then we can come in here and just kind of run, you know, maybe from here to here. Uh, that's not the values I want. Let me do that again. So I'm going to do auto. I'm going to say from there to here. Okay. And then I'm going to measure from here to, let's say there. All right. So I have these two values. So now, uh, uh, you can add more decimal places, but what's important to understand is it's from this reference location. So I want to control where it starts and stops. So we're going to take these numbers, right? So start, uh, this is going to be minus 0.75, and then end is going to be minus 2.69, and recompute. Uh, well, right, I got to get rid of it. Right now it's still looking at this. So let me turn that off and recompute. All right, and so you can see how I can control where it starts cutting and ends cutting. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is the direction of this, right? So we have it along and then you can do a round. All right, um, and if we back plot this and we look at our tool orientation from this view, 
you can see the tool is cutting right on center line. So as it's eating material, uh, this engagement usually, you know, it's beneficial to have the tool leaning into this uh, cut. And with rotary, the tool points to center line the whole time. You don't get Y moves with rotary, okay? Uh, that's where you would go to 4 Pro. But what you may want to control is this this tilt, you know, how the tool is orientated here. And uh, in 4-axis standard, you do have a setting for that. It's this side tilt amount. And essentially what this does is it uh, alters the uh, way the tool is engaging. It kind of ends up laying it down. Uh, so it's it's more engaged, more leaning down, which is generally what you want in those scenarios. So uh, if you're getting a bunch of chatter and noise and it's problems, you, you can come in here and adjust this side sh side shift. And a lot of times that can help to orientate the tool better. But again, you can you can see see how it's starting to move more. Let's let's do it a little bit more. Uh, let's say one inch. All right, so see how we're changing the tool orientation. So it's it's driving with more of this side of the tool than not. Okay, so that is one setting you can use to improve uh, performance. And again, it depends on the material. Okay, we could also just leave it on center, but you're not getting Y movements. Okay, uh, four axis rotary does not give you Y movements. Now, all right, so that's kind of how we control this. We can run it around. We can do some different things. Uh, the other tool path, like let's say not rotary, like let's say you're a 4 Pro user, well, you could come at this with the turn mill, okay? So we're going to do mill multi-axis and turn mill, all right? Uh, from here, we're, usually you're using like a insert style cutter. Um, I'm just going to make it a bigger diameter. Uh, we're going to do part definition here. We're going to pick the whole body. Uh, and, you know, and we have some different options, axis or rotation. Let's make sure this is X. Okay. Bidirectional, positive. There, there's, there's some really, really cool things about this tool pad. But the biggest thing is like the leading in, you know, and how it comes into the part. So let me, uh, let me adjust some of these settings here. Okay. We're going to make this more aggressive. We're going to make this more aggressive. Okay. Um, this is uh, an axial shift. What this one does is uh, it's similar to what we were doing there, but uh, you noticed how the tool ended up laying down more with the rotary, where this one, it's actually moving off center. So having the center of the tool moving off center and, uh, you know, and it affects the way that uh, the tool is approaching the, the routine. And uh, this is just a, another way of approaching it. Uh, it's a newer toolpath to us. I mean, we, we've only had it here for a little while now, but you can see how it does these tangential lead-ins. So the tool isn't uh, burying itself, right? Like let's um, let's turn this on and look at the rotary toolpath. Uh, well, we do support barrel tools fully um, with. If you're buying them really expensive tools and, you know, it's very popular with aerospace right now, uh, we we do support the barrel tools and we have specific tool paths for it. Uh, part of the topics that I wanted to cover here today uh, had to do with machine definition and setting up uh, checking groups. So that way, when you're running simulations, you can check for errors before you get out to the machine. I don't know that I'm going to have the time for it today, uh, but if we look at this, this is our rotary tool path. Uh, what do I want here? So you can see how we use that side shift amount to move the tool off center so we could change the way that it's engaging with the material. Uh, Bidirectional cutting here really doesn't make sense. Uh, this is, uh, so when it's cutting back the other way, that's bad. Uh, if we come in here and turn that off, this we're going to say is zero. Uh, let's go along. Uh, I wonder if you're going to see it that way. Let's simulate it here. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know. So this one, that tilt, you can see when it's going back and forth, it, it's not really changing. It's not really changing the tool on center line there, right? It's just going back and forth and moving up and down. Uh, <clears throat> when we had it going around the part, that's where we saw a big impact on that side shift, right? So when we have it going around the part, we'll have it set back to zero. Uh, let's get back in the simulation. All right, so this is without that side shift, and you can see how the tool is just right on center line and, and how that tool would be engaging the material. And it just works its way back and forth to get down that taper. Right? All right, let's, um, and again, if we use that side tilt or side shift, we can move where that tool orientation is. And I mean, I guess it is moving it off center. I don't, I don't, I don't know that you see the, I guess you can, you got, you got to see the way. Let me see here. You know, you can see how it shifts where the tool orientation is and which way it's driving. So for this direction, that's much better for the way the engagement is. Uh, if this one's going reverse, I don't know. That's cutting with all the bottom of the cutter, so that would be bad. So, you know, with this methodology, you probably want single direction cutting uh, or maybe the spiral routine, right? If you're just doing a taper or something like that. Now, a lot of times it might be like, hey, just turn it on the lathe. Sometimes you don't have a lathe, so you have to get creative. Um, we'll do a spiral routine here. Uh, and compute. Let me post it. Curious. Yeah, we do have, we have Y moves where it's moving, where it is shifted off center here. So I stand corrected on that on the rotary with the side shift here. Uh, but, you know, if we had a, a shoulder, along here it's not going to do like a shoulder move in y this is a position shift in y to get the tool off center right because uh that way you can uh point the tool more into the cut for a better a better cut routine okay uh well what's different about this other stuff right like this knot rotary this turn mill okay uh turn mill i believe you need to be i believe it's four pro right four pro turn mill right uh you can use this on a mill turn you could use it on a four axis mill i uh you can even use it on a five axis mill uh where you're you're turning down this stock here okay uh let's post the code so we'll turn turn that one off and post the code so we can see the z approach here and the rotation on the Z. So this is that tangent, uh, tangent lead-in, tangential. Again, starting off center. Let's get to this view. All right, so we can see it's starting off center, and then it's going to transition into the material. Now it's cutting with the leading edge, right? And then it will work its way around. Let's see it in a simulation. Turn mill is in V34. I'm in V34. So turn mill is available in uh, V10, uh, Bobcam for SolidWorks, V10, Bobcam for Rhino, V2, and Bobcad Cam V34. Uh, it's available now. So you could call your account manager and uh, they could get it turned on for you. All right. So uh, let me kind of just slow it down a little bit. Let's look at this from a left view here. And we can see how it approaches, gets into the material, and then works its way around. Uh, it's not going to cut, it's going to get to the shoulders, but it's not going to cut down into the pockets. 
All right, I don't, we don't have pockets in this example. Uh, you can see that first depth of cut and second depth of cut is a little off there. But you can see how I was able to turn down those shoulders uh, very quickly, uh, cutting off center. So that again, very popular. And then there's different options in here. So this is this is for a mill pro. If you're a mill pro guy, and then um, axial offset. So you could do a distance or by percentage. You could do tangential lead in. Let me uh, recompute that one. 